Hello gamers, my name is Fletcher from PSX Cloud and today I am bringing you my review of Dawn of the Monsters. The game is out now on Google Stadia and is coming to all other platforms on March the 15th and I have a lot to say about this game and it is utterly fantastic. So you might be wondering what is Dawn of New Monsters and why should you be interested in this game? Well Dawn of the Monsters is a side-scrolling kaiju beat-em-up from the excellent team over at 13am games. You take control of four different kaiju and battle enemies known as the Nephilim across different locations across the world. These locations are Canada, Brazil, Egypt and Tokyo. You can play the entire game solo or with up to one friend in couch co-op. The story presented in Dawn of the Monsters begins in the year 2036 when the progressing climate change has led to the awakening of the monsters known as the Nephilim. Giant monsters spread fear and destruction destroying the entire metropolises. To face them, a special task force has been formed. Members of Dawn, as this was the name of the organisation, needed as much as three decades to prepare for the counter-attack. Nevertheless, it was worth the wait as they created their own creatures to fight the monsters. Now there is nothing left for them but to liberate the planet from the hands of the giants. The world has already been ravaged by these creatures and you will see that amongst the desolate and destroyed landscapes that you will traverse. The story progresses along at a great pace over a 6-8 to eight hour period across 33 levels and even has optional dialogue that you can listen to and interact with. The game will give you an in-depth look at characters including a detailed guide with descriptions for all the enemies you come across. The story is great and comes across not only in-game but via colourful manga and style scenes which are fully voice acted by a great cast. There was never a time in which I was confused by the story and ultimately enjoyed every moment getting to know the characters and the overarching storyline. Next up I wanted to talk about the gameplay and what you will expect to see in the game. First of all before starting any level you can choose between four different characters Megadon, Ganera, Tempest Galahad and Aegis Prime. Each of these have their own unique powers and movesets so you can experiment to your heart's content. Alongside this you have a workshop and inventory which allows you to equip upgrades, augments and skins to your characters. The upgrades you get will be given to you in the workshop and you have to buy these when you have attained enough money for completing missions and these range from upgrading health to increasing your rage meter for your special attacks. As I mentioned you also have augments which not only give you buffs and stat upgrades to your characters but also give you unique attributes not accessible by the base characters. These can range from tier 1 all the way up to tier 10 and have a wide range of different stat upgrades. You will unlock these at the end of completing each level within a chapter with early in the game providing you with lower tiers and later levels giving you the highest tiers available within the game. This was a great aspect to the game which I was not expecting when first launching the game and gives you a chance to experiment with a different augments as you can only attach three at a time. What I found was that when a level I came across got too difficult and that I couldn't pass it, I would go back and repeat a level that I've already completed to get access to the loot and upgrade my character more. Another aspect to the upgrade system is that at the end of each level when you get a choice between choosing between two augments is that they are level based based on how you performed across that specific mission. For example, if you got a D or C grade overall, then you would get lower end augments. But if you got an S plus or an S rank, then you would get access to the higher and better augments. This is a great way to add replayability to the game and also gives an incentive for players to do better throughout. The combat throughout each level was solid and incredibly fun, especially as someone who has never really been a beat em up game player. You have the choice of light and heavy attacks which you come to expect in this style of game, but then you come across additional special attacks which can heavily become invaluable especially in the latter stages of the game. If you are looking for an incredibly solid beat em up experience then the combat is perfect and I have yet to find a flaw with any of it. In terms of enemy variety there is a lot throughout the game and some can be incredibly challenging if you have not equipped your character in the right way. Some enemies will try and buff their allies to make your job even harder and some can even fire water from their mouths which you don't expect and I was just astonished to see the amount of variety on hand in this game. The Nephilim design is great and incredibly detailed and I always had a smile on my face when greeting a new enemy. The only downside I can state with the enemy design is that there are occasions where I came across an enemy which might only have a different horn colour for example but then have totally different attacks to their same styled counterparts. This does come across as very confusing and frustrating, especially when there are multiple enemies on the screen at one time. In terms of performance, I was playing on Google Stadia with Google TV and on the PC via the web browser at both 4K and 1080p quality. I had very little in the way of issues 
and only came across one instance where the game froze and crashed on a loading screen. This is certainly a great looking game with its cell shaded manga inspired art style across both a 4K TV and 1080p high refresh rate monitor. In terms of multiplayer, there is couch co-op which is a great addition and certainly gave both me and my partner a lot of fun as we progressed through the game. Unfortunately, I wish there was an online edition of co-op as there are moments I wish I could have experienced this with my friends, however this was not possible. Hopefully in the future they do rectify this and do add an online mode. So what do I think of the game overall? What I like to do here is rate a game on a stream sale save basis. And for me, this title is a game that you all want to stream right now. Even though the game does miss out on having an online mode, everything else about this title is phenomenal. The characters, story and design is unmatched and 13AM games have developed an absolute masterpiece in the beat em up game genre. I was hooked by the gameplay and level design and I always had a reason to jump back into previous levels I have already completed. If you are a gamer looking for a great solid beat em up game then this is the game you will certainly want. So that wraps up my review of Dawn of the Monsters. If you enjoyed the review subscribe down below and hit that like button. My name is Fletcher from PSX Cloud and I will see you in the next video.